G'day battlers and today we've got a brand new meta which is not only going to be the Sylph Arena monthly meta for the month of June but it is also going to be the meta for the Sylph Season 3 Regional so this is going to be a really important meta and it's a pretty interesting one it's a mix of Retro Cup and Ghost Stadium's cliffhanger format so we'll jump into first we're actually going to talk about what the meta is then we're going to talk about kind of what Pokemon are going to be good then we'll jump into the meta simplified infographic and then we're going to talk about team building at the end because team building is going to be a big thing in this cup because it's Essentially, you're going to have 20 points to build your team, and different Pokemon are going to be worth different amounts in this cup. So, first off, Dark, Fairy, and Steels are all going to be banned. So, the same bans as the Retro Cup, and then also Chansey and Mega Pokemon are going to be banned as well. So, let's jump into kind of how the point breakdown works so we can kind of understand what we're actually going to be using in this cup. So here is the point breakdown for the Venture Cup. And essentially, you've got three different categories, or I guess four different categories. First, we have the 10-point Pokemon. These are like really good Pokemon, and you're only going to be able to have one of these in your team because you may think like, you know, 10 points plus 10 points, 20, you can have two, but every other Pokemon is going to be worth at least one point. So there's no zero-point Pokemon, so you can only have one of these picks, kind of like Commander Cup. Uh, so you can have one Commander if you feel like it, if you want to spend half of your points on that one pick with some really powerful Pokemon with Cresselia from Process, Altaria, Hypno, Alolan Marowak, and Lickitung. Then we've got the six point Pokemon on the right. I have had to kind of like move this graphic around a little bit so it would fit in the sort of YouTube dimensions. But uh, we've got Jellicent, and then underneath me we have Politoed and Kingdra, Dragonair, Lapras, Metacham, Talonflame, Galvantula, Defense, Deoxys, Licky Licky, Regirox, Snorlax, Munchlax, Spigroth, and Dugong. Then back to the bottom we have the four point Pokemon. We have Pachirisu and Abomasnow have kind of been shoehorned in there because they weren't on the original graphic that I took all this from. Uh, then Driftlum, Crustle, Mew, Pelipa, Whiskash, Swampit, Machamp, Alolan Graveler, Zangoose, Dragonite, Kudra, Dusclop, Celio, Wobbuffet, Lantern, Credilly, Tropius, Gengar, Haunter, Mantine, Servesh, and Stunfisk. And everything else that is not on this graphic and not banned is worth one point. So let's jump into the Medicine Fight Infographic to kind of see how this is probably going to go. Did you get the screenshot? Uh, but yeah, essentially, uh, this Meta Simplified Infographic is going to be laid out a little bit differently to usual. We have the main box that's over there, and then we also have two groups underneath me. So I'll talk about these dudes a little bit more towards the end of the video, because first we're going to focus in on this main sort of core four uh, four groupings in this main uh, main box. So we have like, you know, it's the big retro cup sort of staples. We have the ghost slot with that Alolan Marowak, Frostlass, and Driftblum, where you do see that Alolan Marowak and the Frostlass are the 10 point picks from before, and then Driftblum is there as well. Then moving on, to the top right, we have Defense Deoxys, Metacham, Machamp, and Vigoroth, the fighting types, a lot of 10 point picks, kind of a lot of, a lot of points flying around as well, not 10 point picks. Uh, then bottom left, we have the Psychic types, so Cresselia and Hypno. Both of those are 10 point picks. And then in the bottom right, we have the uh, sort of normal types plus Regirox. We have the Munchlax, Snorlax, Lickitung, Zangoose, and Regirox. So we have a bit of 10 point action in there as well with Lickitung. And the only other 10 point pick is Altaria, which is down below, but again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, jumping into the graphic, it's really like, it's pretty straightforward, these matchups. So, we have the ghost types beating the psychic types, as you'd expect. We have the ghost types beating the fighting types, as you'd expect. We have the psychic types beating the fighting types, as you'd expect. And then that normal types with the sort of, you know, that lick damage is are able to overcome the psychics and the ghost, and then are going to be losing to the fighters. I've basically just done this whole meta simplified in like that like 15 seconds because that is kind of the core of what's going on here. There's nothing too fancy, you know, there's bits and pieces like, for example, Defense Deoxys can have Rock Slide, that's going to be hurting the Frost, that's going to be hurting the Lola Marowak, it's going to be hurting the Drift Bloom. It's definitely going to have some play backwards, so it's not like it's a RPS land Drift Bloom up against Defense Deoxys and you win the game entirely. There is some playback, especially, and then, you know, figure off. Vigoroth is usually like this super powerful, like safe sort Pokemon. It's a little less slow in this meta just because there is so much that's kind of like, that it's not beating, that are really powerful in this cup. But then you kind of have to consider the fact like, you know, oh, Cresselia and Hypno are both going to be 10 point Pokemon. So you might not even see them in a team. You might see them, or well, you're only going to see one maximum. So this is like, maybe that means that they're going to have a bit more play. But then uh, that brings us over to the box down below, which is that it's got a dragon group and it's got an ice group. And essentially the dragons, the dragons don't really fit in the main graphic. On my Retro Cup infographic, which you can watch is if you want a bit more info, I guess, on some similar matchups, Altaria is a bit of a sort of, uh, it plays a bit back and forth. It beats a lot of things, it loses to a lot of things, and it kind of like, it doesn't just cut and dry beat one group, for example, like Frostlass. Frostlass is going to beat Altaria pretty hard with the double super effective ice. Whereas against Alolan Marowak, Altaria has a much better time in that matchup. So then there's a bunch of other dragons in this cup that are not worth 10 points. So that means they're going to be used a lot more as well in your Kingdra, your Dragonet, and your Gudra, who's down in the four point slot. 
And then, like, you know, there's a bunch of other dragons who are worth one point as well. So they're sort of just neutralists. They do really well in neutral matchups. They're able to kind of round out your team a little bit. There might be some really good double dragon strats that may pop up that can kind of just, there's nothing that's going to hard beat them. Like, you know, maybe someone spends 10 points on their Frost Lass, then they'll have something really good. But if you don't have that Frost Lass, then you might want to bring something on your team that's kind of like those ice types in the bottom. Your Lapras, your Abomasnow, your Celio. Uh, Dugong is another good one that I think is worth four points. Uh, I should probably check, uh, but I'm not gonna. Yeah, these ice types, like their main role is to counter the dragons. Having just that one good check, if you don't have Frost Ice on your team, I would probably recommend bringing in an ice type of some variety. Abomasnow is really good in this cup. So I think Abomasnow might potentially be the best pick out of the non-Frost Ice Ices. So like, because Abomasnow is going to have that extra coverage against not only the other Ice types, your Lapras, your Celia, your Dugong, it's going to have the energy balls to throw at that as well. But it's also going to have pretty good play up against like Frost Ice. If you can land that energy ball onto Frost Ice, that does a ton of damage. So it does, kind of just does really well in that regard. You know, it gets its charge moves off really quick. I mean, so does uh, Celia with the Body Slam spam, but you can maybe get your Body Slam from the Vigor off. But uh, yeah, really, I'm rambling a little bit, but essentially there's, main, there's a main four groups here. We have Psychics and Ghosts being really strong. We have the sort of Lickitung group being able to counter those groups. Then we have the fighting types that are going to be able to counter the Lickitung group. That's the core of it. Then you've got some other neutrals. There's some other picks that are good as well. For example, like the, the Electro types, Galvantia and Pachirisu. They're pretty good in this meta, but don't really fit in this graphic. They're not really like hard countering anything too much. They're just kind of Pokemon that are going to be a bit annoying to face. And this is just like a very preliminary look. But let's kind of look at sort of team building and see what we can kind of see here. So you've got a few uh, different team builds you can kind of go for. You can go for your classic, like bring a 10 point Pokemon, bring this like uber tier, super good Pokemon. Then you've got 10 other points to throw around. So you can then bring like a six point Pokemon. Then you'll have to bring one point Pokemon for your other four slots. You can bring a 10 and a four. Uh, you can actually bring, actually no, you can't bring. So that's, the, you, you cannot bring a 10 point and two four points because then you're up to 18 points and you only have two points to get your last three Pokemon, which doesn't add up because every Pokemon is worth at least one point. So if you bring a 10 point Pokemon, you can only bring one other Pokemon that is on the rest of like the tier list at all, which I mean, I guess you'd may as well bring in a six point Pokemon because like, hey, may as well, you're gonna have to bring the rest of one points anyway. Although then like, you know, maybe there's a full hidden Pokemon that really fits onto your team that you may wanna go for. So there's a bit of discouragement to go for that 10 point Pokemon because then you can only have two of this entire array of really good Pokemon in this meta. So then you might go for something a bit more of a six point Pokemon build. So you cannot bring three six point Pokemon because again, you'd bring up to 18 and have two points left to get your last three. So you can bring two six point Pokemon, then you'll be up to 12. Then you've got uh, four more Pokemon to bring in. So you can bring in another four. Uh, and then fill up the rest with three, so then you can get three of these good Pokemon in your team, missing out of the 10 points. So there's some different ways to play it around there. Personally, I'm kind of feeling like I might want to step away from the 10 point Pokemon. I know that like they're really good, but they're all, they've all got alternatives, right? You've got Altaria, you could just bring in a Kingdra instead, or a, you know, a Gujra or something. Instead of Frostas, you can bring in your uh, Ice types, like your Dugongs, your Abomasnow. Instead of Lickitung, you just have Licky Licky, which is a similar Pokemon. It's obviously not as bulky, but you know, there's these similar roles that can fill the same sort of slots. Hypno is a bit of one that you can't replace very easily. I guess uh, the sort of pivot from Hypno would be using something like a Mew, because one of Hypno's big benefits is that it's got that Swiss Army Knife ability. It can be really good. Your opponent has to be scared of it no matter what Pokemon they have. You could have a move that could do some work there, which is actually why I think Hypno is just better than Cresselia. Unless Cresselia fits onto your team specifically, I feel like I'm not sure why you would bring Cresselia instead of Hypno. I think it's mainly hit the 10 point mark because you know, if Cresselia was down in six point Pokemon, then it was like, you know, there would be mass uh, rushing towards like Cresselia at six points. So it's kind of like, in my opinion, it feels like a little bit of a worse Hypno. Because Hypno, you know, it has that ice coverage for the dragons. And it's got the Shadow Ball for all of the ghosts and psychics that are all around. Very powerful Pokemon. I feel like a lot of people are going to be going for sort of Hypno team builds. You know, then might, people might pivot towards like a Lick Tongue team build. But, but yeah, with all that said, that's kind of my main sort of thoughts on this meta so far. I'm going to have a lot of other stuff coming out this month as well. So stay tuned for all that. Maybe some more team building tips as well. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, especially that subscribe one. Let me know what you're kind of initially thinking how you're going to build your team. If you think you are going to go for that sort of 10 point build or more of a like stack as many six points in as possible. Maybe you're just going to go for like an all four point or you're going to go absolute meme fact at going an entire one point team which will be awesome to see as well 
I'm hoping to see some six point teams out there. But yeah, thank you to my patrons and supporters over on Twitch as well, because they are super cool people. And yeah, that is my video. So do subscribe if you have not already, because there'll be plenty more uh, venture, <laughs> I was going to say Vortex, venture cup content coming out. If there's a battle video up, it'll be over there. If there's a tournament recap out by the time you're watching this video, then it'll be down there as well. And um, yeah, if you're doing regionals, good luck in your regionals tournament. Mine will be on the 19th-ish, I believe. So uh, yeah, good luck to everyone.